Hi, I'm Paul O'Flynn from RT Sport, and this is my new book, Go Johnny Go, the inspirational story of uh, Ireland and Leinster rugby player Johnny Sexton, told for six to 12 year old boys and girls. And I'm here outside the Viva Stadium, home of uh, Irish rugby, and where Johnny performed so many of his amazing moments on the pitch. And I'm just going to read a little bit of the book for you now. Chapter one, drop goal. They could hear the brass band playing from deep inside the stadium. Drums drumming, trumpets trumpeting, and French fans singing along. The excitement was building in the Stade de France in Paris. It was a dark, wet winter's day, just a few minutes to kick off the start of the 2018 Six Nations, France versus Ireland. Johnny looked around the dressing room. He knew this place well, but he never liked it. Ireland never liked it. They had won games here just twice in almost 40 years. Paris was a graveyard of Irish rugby dreams, but this year was different. Johnny could feel it. Johnny fiddled with his socks a little, looked up and scanned the room. His eyes settled on Rory Best, Ireland's inspiring captain and leader on the pit. He was lacing up his boots. He looked across to Rob Kearney, one of the best fullbacks ever to play for Ireland. The monster magician Keith Earls was jumping on his toes. There was a new crop of young stars too, like James Ryan, Jacob Stockdale and Dan Levy. They were nervous but excited about what lay ahead. Coach Joe Schmidt quietly dished out some last minute instructions. He was the tough teacher from New Zealand who had transformed Irish rugby. Then came the referee's knock on the door. It was time. They all stopped and turned towards Johnny, their star out half. The team's driving force and playmaker, the best number 10 in the world with all the skills and a will to win to match. Let's go, boys, he roared. Johnny stood still for the anthems. This was always a special moment, no matter how many times he played for Ireland. He stared out with steely black eyes, taking it all in, pride rising inside him as he thought to himself, we're not losing today. Johnny could see that Ireland were getting nowhere. He thought about a crossfield kick. Was it too risky? Those who dare win, he thought to himself. He spotted Keith Earls in some space out wide and launched a perfect kick right into his arms. It could have been all over, but Earls gathered it and Ireland were off again. Pick and go, pick and go. Surely France would eventually run out of steam. Johnny's leg was cramping. He was running on empty, so he stepped back and stopped to stretch it. The French thought he was trying to fool them, but Johnny had nothing left in the tank. He knew there was only one chance left. He would have to go for a drop goal but there were miles out. Everybody could see what Johnny was going to do. The French players charged forward with their hands in the air, trying to block the kick. The fans in the stadium couldn't believe their eyes. He's too far out, surely. He was 42 meters out to be precise. One of the longest drop goals anyone had ever attempted. Everybody back home in Ireland watching on TV held their breath, hearts stopped. It all happened in slow motion. Johnny had only half a second, even less. He released the ball and swung his boot with all the force he had. Sexton shows his guts and goes for glory. He gave the ball an almighty thump. The players froze. All they could do was watch. The egg-shaped ball flew high into the sky and started to spin once, twice, three times. It was on target, all right. Johnny knew that straight away. But did it have the distance? It was dropping. Dropping, dropping. Johnny's eyes bulged in disbelief. It's going towards the posts. It's over. Ireland with the drop goal. Le drop. France have been destroyed with the final kick of the game. Ireland have snatched it. Johnny stretched out his arms wide and pumped his fists in the air. He couldn't believe it. He'd done it. One of the greatest kicks of all time. His teammates ran towards him and bundled him onto the ground. Murray, Kearney and Robbie Henshaw were the first to pile on. Johnny was smothered at the bottom. He could hardly breathe, but he didn't care. It was his greatest moment on the rugby field. The French players were shell-shocked, lying bloodied and exhausted, with their heads held in their hands. When Johnny finally surfaced, Bundy jumped straight into his arms. Yes, Sexto, how do you do it, bro? What a cracker, Joe Schmidt laughed. We knew you had it in your locker. Johnny was on top of the world. It got even better over the next few weeks. Ireland beat Italy, Wales, Scotland, and then England on St. Patrick's Day, winning the Grand Slam. History had been made. Ireland's Grand Slam story started with a drop goal on that famous night in Paris. But 
the story of their hero, Johnny Sexton, started a long time before that. Johnny's story started back in 1985 in a place called Rathgar on the south side of Dublin.